Welcome to the latest issue of Retro Gamer Magazine. I'm Darren Jones. And I'm Jonathan Wells. And this month we've got Wipeout. Um, well, no, not Wipeout. Wipeout 2097, which was the far superior sequel. Now, um, before we do carry on, one of the things I do want to make clear is that this isn't actually me on the front cover. <laughs> I know I'm narcissistic, but not by that much. <laughs> and this is um, actually Mike Daly, who works at DMA Designs. Yeah, he? that's right. And yeah. um, basically, he's been responsible for some amazing, amazing games. So um, well, I just want to clear that up because everybody in the forum seems to think it's me. So um, I'll pass over to Johnny as he put this awesome cover together. Uh, yeah, no, we, um, I was saying earlier, I don't know how many times you can see how fortunate we are to get artwork, but <laughs> we really are. And um, yeah, the guys over here, is it DMA, was it? You said? Um, no, Design Republic. No, Design Republic, 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 yeah. They, um, they actually sent us through some high-res artwork. Uh, not that in the end a lot of it got used, but... Uh, mainly just the ships, but the ideas and the actual like concept of their covers and stuff. We managed to get a fifth colour treatment and try and match the original like manual and box art. So, so that's why it's all that's why it's like, shiny, like a fifth, it? fifth colour foil. Yeah. I mean, one of the one of the problems we do have with uh, mid nineties games is that most of the, from a cover point of view, most of the artwork we want to use are it's just really bad renders, isn't it? Yeah, it's not great. And so then, it's an, an area we're going to look to approach in some way when, when if we if the case comes to it. But um, yeah, based got, based on popularity and stuff, and yeah. and then because three D games, most three D games don't age too well. So again, if you was to blow up something like Wipeout twenty ninety seven, it just wouldn't look great on the cover. So as a, as a screenshot, do you mean? Yeah, 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 yeah as yeah. a screenshot. So, yeah. so when um yeah when we get opportunities like this, we have to go for them really. Yeah, we? yeah. So yeah, it's a really interesting art style as well. So it's yeah real fun to play with. With regards to the actual content, we've got um, uh, Revolution, the company which has made Broken Sword. They've just turned 25 years old and they've got pretty much all their games coming out on a single PC compilation, which is um, pretty decent. So you've got all the Broken Swords, things like Lure of the Temptress, Beneath a Ke Steel Sky, In Cold Blood. So um, I'm quite looking forward to that, yeah, actually. Well, when is it coming out again? Um, do you know something? I, I, think, I think it's this very, very shortly, as in end of February. Oh, okay. So that'd be quite cool, just just slightly after the issues come out. Yeah. Um, Houston are also coming back as well. So Houston con uh, Consultants were a popular bit company back in the day, and um, it looks like they're coming back. It's unclear yet whether they're going to have their old games. Probably not as they were sold over to Rebellion, but you never know. We might get some HD remakes of things like Exelon on Iridium. <laughs> oh, this is quite cool as well. We've got an interview with Andy Brown, who um, does the London Gamer Market which is this cool place where I think three or four times a year you can go up to London and basically buy from traders and there's lots of cool retro games as well as board games and bits and bobs to get. Okay, then, so this is the main the main feature, which is Wipeout 2097. Oh, you like this as well, don't you, John? Because there's, you've got the pre-production sketches yeah. and stuff. Yeah, they actually um, they sent through some concept art as well, which is always appreciated, especially when it comes to making of, because it kind of backs up the whole idea. Of, like We obviously have been speaking to these people, but to get some like exclusive access to some of the like actual sketches and stuff, I don't say exclusive, it's probably was saw, seen a long time ago, but um, or to be reminded I, of it. And do you know something, though? I don't know, because you'd probably, you'd, you'd, you'd have probably maybe seen a couple of them in like, magazines and stuff back in the day yeah but no I, I think i think a lot of this stuff is typically just used for for the um the, the um developers i mean i yeah. certainly can't recall seeing yeah, no, seeing like, yes, this yeah. stuff although i wasn't really pro playstation yeah. <laughs> um back when because um the saturn was just my preferred console but um no we, we got we got some good content for this and yeah and like i said um with the art style it kind of like really helped like with the feature like lending little touches and stuff so it's um it's quite fun to play with and we've, we've even got your world mapping as well which is uh, an which, is, which is always joke. nice yeah it's a little in joke that we have although it's not not happened it for a while has a it for a while so we got a little piece on the zx spectrum plus two which was amstrad's version of the spectrum not sinclair's and then um this turned out really well didn't it trantor yeah. the last stormtrooper is it a game you're familiar with or not at all well, um, well, luckily, it is a game that I'm familiar with, and um, I used to own this back in the day on the Amstrad, and it's it's um it's quite hard, but it's a really slick run and gun, heavily inspired by Aliens. Oh yeah, yeah I think I remember reading. And that, it's by David Perry. Well, David Perry did the Amstrad coding, and um, Nick Bruti came up with the original design. And David Perry, as you probably know, recently sold his what was, was it Sony, was it? to Sony yeah. for like. Loads and loads of money, yeah. but yeah, no, it's um, it's always good when you can cover some of the cooler 
8-bit games, more so if they're ones that you used to play when you were a kid. Oh, yeah. And um, I'll turn this one over to you, Johnny, because this is all thanks to your work, really, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, it's um, Akari Warriors. Is, uh, we, we're familiar with the artwork, art style from it. From I think we had an old arcade. I can't remember when, what, what would the piece have been. Does um, it have a... Oh, uh, point out conversions, but we we literally done that round about issue like sixty or something. So yeah. we, we've not done anything Nothing like Atari based for yeah. years and years. And I just remember seeing the artwork and the art style on it, and I just thought I want to play with something like that, and um, not the game, but the actual style of it to kind of theme it around that. And I managed to track down and get hold of SNK and basically dig out the artwork. And I believe it was. Is that after I said, I said <laughs> oh yeah, good luck getting a hold of any Japanese developers. Yeah. I'm going to help you out. And yeah, lo and behold, he did it. Sent, it, <laughs> sent an email in the evening, had a, had a reply by the morning. So cheers, Darren. I mean, there's a, there's a bit of a running thing going actually through the issue because um, we've, we've got three run and gun games in there. Mm. So Turrican, which is the one we're looking at now. Um, our curry warriors and and obviously Trantor is a run and gun so um yeah Turrican 2 although it came out first on the Amiga it was always built as a Commodore 64 game and um it's a re it's a really decent little blaster interestingly the Mega Drive version that came out um it was actually ported into Universal Soldier and what you can probably see here is that because they were amazingly lazy one of the, the actual boss at the end of Tarakin 2 on the C64 and Amiga is like this really cool massive killer robot, which is actually in the issue. You can actually see him here. Anyway, what they've done for Universal Soldier is for the last boss, they literally took Jean-Claude Van Damme's um, enemy in the film, which was played by, is it Dolph? Dolph Lundgren. Dolph yeah. Lundgren. And they've just made him bloody gigantic, as you can see there, which is... Utterly stupid, but it's quite funny. We've also got Blue Lightning, which is a great... This was really good, actually. This was a launch game for the Atari yeah. Lynx. And it's a little slow now. Um, I went back to it when we were looking at it to get some more screenshots. And it's, it's a bit more sedate than I remember. But at the time, it was like having Afterburner in the palm of your hand. And you had all these cool scaling effects. And um, it's just a really great little shooter. Minority Pay um, feature covers the Game Boy Color, which is, we don't really do a lot of handheld stuff, do we? So no, we no, something we are yeah, we're looking to look to do in the future. If there's a, some sort of feature or something we can do on the pieces or something, then we'll do that. But if not, we'll just approach them individually and uh, go from there. And um, Eurocom, then. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, not, it wasn't one of your favourite features, was it? Wasn't was it wasn't my favourite this issue, no. Um, yeah, normally we try and go off of the art style or the box art and... They they threw me nothing. They oh, it was it was a, it was a struggle. This issue. <laughs> this is better, better though, isn't it? I mean, you must have played this back in. Yeah, no, I definitely played Duke Nukem. Well, you would have been a nipper when this came out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I probably should. I should. I probably shouldn't have. Been I was actually it. old <laughs> enough to play this when it first came out. So that's um that's rather sad. But yeah. um yeah, I mean, Duke Nukem 3D is 20 years old now. It's not aged obviously very well now because there's just a lot of misogynistic stuff in it and it's it's just dated really badly but the actual gameplay is still really solid it was um it and it built massively on games like doom it's easy to more so because of duke nukem forever it's easy to look back at duke and just laugh but it, it was actually doing a lot of important mm. stuff yeah so we've managed to get interviews with scott miller um one of the um creators as well as well all the different conversions and ralph eagles yeah, who's basically did the the PS4 and Vita port that came out uh, PS3, late, PS3, late PS3, last year. Sorry, yeah, PS3, John. Oh, this is quite cool as well. Sega Rally. We were looking at doing this as a, a cover, a cover yeah. option, but you rightfully scared <laughs> me away from that, don't you? Yeah, no, I didn't think that was a... I just think the art... If we wanted to get a screenshot, it wouldn't really work, and the art style wasn't... Yeah, it wasn't great, so... Yeah, no, but I think um, as a feature, it actually works. I think Nick did this one, didn't he? So. Yeah, and um, oh, and a big thanks to Sumo Steve Lysett because he was able to put us in touch with a couple of guys who we wouldn't have otherwise got. So yeah. we basically spoke to everybody with regards to the ver the various games that have come out, both in the arcades and on the home systems. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a really nice feature. Finally, the last couple of features is um, Psychonauts, which came out originally on Xbox, but because you can't emulate it, the screenshots of them from the um, just as good PC version, and that's an interview with Tim Schafer because Psychonauts 2 is obviously on its way. And then the man on the cover, uh, Mike Daly, not me, Mike Daly, 
And again, this looks back at his career. He's currently at Yo-Yo Games, and um, and it's 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 quite a good one because he talks about the you kind of see everything go full circle because initially he's working on systems like the C64, but now when you go into the handhelds, they've got similar things in that you know you've got limited memory, you've got to make games in a certain way. So yeah, it's a fascinating read, and he's been involved in everything from Lemmings to Shadow of the Beast. Oh, do you want to quickly mention your new look home brew section? Well, we, we, we can mention it. <laughs> it's something that's been going on for ages. It's something that I've been meaning to rejig and give a bit of a clean up for a while. And it's just, for whatever reasons, it's always been put back and put back and put back. All the elements are still there, but it's just hopefully a bit more of a, a tidy way. And um, I think you're looking at it, so... And yeah, we've got a little extra bits added in there. Yeah, so. we've, we've added a new one now because people wanted to know about, like, homebrew stuff from back in the day, back in the 90s, unlike the Amiga and that. So if there's anything that you do want featured, obviously either let us know in the comments section or write in to us at the usual magazine scene address. And then um, finishing off, we'll just quickly go over to the next month page. We've got a brand new feature series called License to Thrill, which is where we're going to look at um, video game adaptions of classic film and TV licenses. So first up is Robocop, because if you're going to do anything on film licenses, that's the game to start with. Um, but we've got lots of cool ones coming up, including things like Alien Free, Cobra, and uh, mainly other games which um, haven't featured in the mag before. We've also got a look at um, Blagger and Son of Blagger, the Mega CD feature, which was going to be this issue, but has been pushed back, and you'll find out for that why next issue. History of Operation Rule, when Rare ruled the N64, because they did. Um, a look at Omicron, the Nomad Soul, 40 years of um, Apple, the company, not the fruit. And um, pieces on Samba the Amiga and Tornado. <laughs> <laughs> There's other stuff as well, but we'll, we'll wait until you've seen the issue. And um, that's it, really. So, as always, any, any comments on the videos or the mag in general, please leave um, below in that thing down there. And, um, yeah, we'll see you next month. So, I'm Darren Jones. I'm Jonathan Wells. Take care, guys. Bye.